Artcentric Podcast with Rafi and Klee. Hola, you amazing artists. It's Rafi and Klee. And today we are going to talk about being unstoppable mm -hmm. as an artist, as a human, as whatever. Basically, when you are doing this art career thing um, or anything, anything that's creative and you're putting yourself out there, you want to get to a place where you're uh, unstoppable, where you feel like you are unstoppable. And to be honest with you, the feeling of unstoppability, I don't know if that's a word, but the feeling of unstoppability is the thing that allows you to become unstoppable. And for anybody that's listening to this, we have our amazing Rogue Artist family here with us. So if you hear us reading any comments, that's who we're reading the comments from, um, where they give us their questions, insights, and their just stories. stories and expand on whatever the topic is of this podcast, which today is being unstoppable. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Nancy says, Clee, not to get off topic, I'm wearing your earrings. Oh, yay. That's Thank awesome. Thank you, Nancy. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. So earlier before I started the podcast, I had to check to make sure that I had no boogers or red teeth, as Artist Haven said. <laughs> Uh, it's funny because all of that will be in the comment section. So if somebody's watching this video, they're going to see that like I had to literally check for boogers. Um, and, it you know, true. here's here's the interesting thing about that is that checking for boogers um, is one of those things that you are either willing to check and be unstoppable and keep moving forward or it's going to stop you in your tracks. Like how I segued there into the pretty, subject of unstoppableness. That was pretty nice. <laughs> Shroy said, force of nature. Yes, exactly. Force of nature. That's one of the things that I like to describe um, Klee as. You know, like right now, Klee is working on bringing back her music career. Mojo. Mojo, right? This is something that... In the past, there was a lot of focus on, you know, just the, the art shows and what we were doing. And, and it always felt like there just wasn't enough room for anything else. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, whether you are um, working a corporate job or you have a corporate side hustle and you're doing your art uh, as well, you're going to feel sometimes you feel like you can't do it all right? You, you feel not unstoppable. Let's put it that way. And this is why it's important to talk about this subject because a lot of times when we look at people that are successful, that have done something that you consider amazing, right? This is impossible and this person did this. A lot of times we see that person after they accomplish the thing, right? The thing that they're being lauded for. We don't see them crying in the bathroom. Right. We don't see them crying in the bathroom and, you know, shaking their hands, their fists to the air and saying, I did my best. I did my best. Because in order to get there, all that stuff needs to happen. You have to get into a mindset where you are unstoppable and there are plenty of things that are going to cause you to want to stop. The number one thing is your own mind, your own doubts, your fears, your insecurities, all that stuff. And I would say that that is actually the only thing that will cause you to stop, right? Because let's say that there's naysayers out there or that you run into a roadblock when it comes to achieving this thing that you want to achieve um, and you feel like, okay, well, it's the naysayers that are putting me in this place or it's this roadblock or I got rejected from this thing. And the truth is that none of those things are going to be able to stop you. None of them are going to be able to stop you. It doesn't matter if you got rejected or if somebody that you're close to is telling you there's no way that you're going to ever be able to that's, you know, just get your head out of the clouds, grow up or whatever it is. None of those people can stop you. It's what they are saying and it connecting with you and you actually believing that it's true. That's the thing that can stop you. I have found it useful to have the perspective of a cartoon villain and the conviction of a cartoon villain while simultaneously using your powers for good. So when you're up against naysayers or even your own self-critic, to just be like, foolish mortals, <laughs> <laughs> you can't defeat me. I mean, and that's the truth of it. Because like, if anybody's coming to you and saying... Um, you know what, you can't do this, right? It doesn't mean that they're right. It just means that they don't have the vision 
for something like that to come true. And that's the reality of it. If if you go up to somebody and you have an idea for something, it just means that they don't have that vision. They 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 can't quantify how it's going to happen. Uh, and that's the reality. Whenever I've been like that, you know, because we all find ourselves in that position, like somebody's going to come to you and they have like some harebrained idea and they're like, this is going to be great. And in your brain, you're like, I don't know. A lot of times in those situations, you know, now who I am now, I realize that like, it's not that it's not possible. It just means that I'm not there yet with my own vision. I'm, I'm not clear minded. I have some some hangups when it comes to this thing. It doesn't mean that it, that thing that they're telling me that maybe right now I think is completely ridiculous isn't achievable. Of course it's achievable. I just don't see it yet. And so when it comes to people like that that come up to me and they're like, I have this plan for this thing, I will never, ever, ever um, naysay their plan because I don't know what's possible for them. It, it's It's... It's really, it's interesting to me that people will assume that position where they will say, well, this is impossible, you know, or you wanting to do this thing is impossible as if they've walked every, every single shoe and done every single thing on the planet. And when you break it down, it's actually quite well and good that other people don't share your vision because if they did, they might be doing it. Exactly. <laughs> instead of you and it's funny how how hard we try to convince other people and i think when you understand that like you're the holder of the vision right just because other people can't see it doesn't mean anything it just means that you're the one who's doing it and oftentimes the picture is real real fuzzy until you're quite a ways in exactly <laughs> and exactly. then maybe the next step reveals itself to you and then the next step and the next step and the next step somebody like me doesn't understand how the hell anybody manages to make a film, okay? And we have Ev here with us who's been inv involved in the filmmaking process and even like, even the tidbits of information that I know about how films get made, I still like, I'm not somebody who would like try and make a film. I'm like, that's hard and you need magic and some universal forces that I don't understand to get it done. Uh, uh, but that but that doesn't stop people from making films. Exactly. So if somebody <laughs> came up to you that you knew and they were like, I'm going to make a film, right? Like, that's amazing. Yeah. That's off. Yeah. And that's the difference is like, you know, because you know it's hard, but you know that it obviously can be done because people do it all the time. Um, you're not going to stand there and be like, no, that's impossible. Like, get your head out of the clouds, you know? And that's the thing. That's why somebody comes to us and they're like, I want to build an art career. I want to I want to do this for a living. For us, it's like, yeah, of course, you can do this. You know, you're going to have to figure out your own way of doing it. And there might be some advice and some tips that we could give you. But really, at the end of the day, it's your journey. To stand there and naysay that, is to suggest that no one has ever done it before. And even if it is something that no one has ever done before, there is no way of quantifying that it's going to fail. You know what I mean? And like, that's the thing. It's like for people that are out there and they're naysaying stuff, there is really no way for them to be able to stand there and justify their naysaying other than the fact that they could say, well, this is reality, right? Some like generalized thing like, well, in reality, blah, 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 blah. You know, you got to be realistic. You got to be, those are the excuses that you use. So when you're unstoppable, it's, you understand this. You understand that like, okay, this is this person's insecurity speaking to me. They don't have the vision that I have. Just because they say no, that it's not possible, doesn't mean that it's impossible. And let's talk about reality while we're on the subject, because I think one of our main hindrances is that we're all a little too enamored with reality. And when you hear quotes from or see things with innovators who have done the impossible, they're, like, their greatest skill that they rely on is to be very practiced in seeing what could be or at least speculating on what could be rather than being enamored by what is right getting caught up in the glamour of and i don't mean glamour like glamorous i mean the glamour right the the all-encompassing nature of reality and i think a lot of us maybe haven't built that muscle of seeing past that 
seeing past the perceived the veil yeah the the glamour as you put it and even scientists will say like the reality that we're seeing is really like as we're coming to understand it on a quantum level it's really still just a field of potentiality like it might not be as real as we think but even not going down that rabbit hole it's the ability to build a muscle to see the potential instead of the lack of or what is right Shroy said, you know who had a side hustle? Albert Einstein. Yeah, he Indeed, did. he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, prep for your future self to have a place to start, said Isabi. Yes, Isabi. Yeah, we'll joke like we're either hooking up our future self or we're like, sorry for you future self when we're being like, you know, not doing the things we know we should do. <laughs> Cameron said, I've already ripped a hole in my pants because of how hot it is, but I'm still working, trying to be unstoppable. That's great, Cameron. Art- Excellent. Artist Haven said, being unstoppable doesn't mean you're unbreakable. Things may break your spirit, mojo, momentum, but being unstoppable is not letting those breaks get the better of you and keep moving forward. I would say that being unstoppable is understanding that like shit is going to hit the fan, things are going to go wrong, and you can always pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and go and understanding that failure being unstoppable doesn't mean that you're not going to fail success is built on a mountain of failures like you're you're whenever you're doing something that you've never done before you're going to fail you don't know how to do it you know and and that's the thing is that everybody has this idea that failure is a bad thing failure is the greatest teacher of all you know if you want to really because you could read shit in a book you could Uh, listen to us speaking you could go to a course or a class but until you get your hands in the clay and you are trying something for the first time and you fuck it up you're not going to learn until you actually do that process most definitely right because you're going to know things conceptually but you're not going to know things experientially And it's that experiential knowledge that really, really allows you to build your confidence, right? Sure, I know this thing because I heard it here or somebody said this or whatever. And that's the reality. When it comes to like naysaying, whether you're naysaying yourself or people are naysaying you, that's what they're doing. They're bringing up a conceptual idea, right? This doesn't work. This is the information that I've read. But my question is always, well, have you done it yourself? You know, how can you tell me that it doesn't work or that this isn't how it's supposed to be or or whatever it is, whatever you're tell- naysaying me on, how do you know that unless you've actually done it? How do you know how to create a clay pot unless you've actually put your hands in the clay? I don't care how many YouTube videos you've watched. It's not until you actually do the thing that you start to learn the thing. You start to feel the thing out, right? There's a lot of advice, uh, for example, on YouTube. There's a lot of advice of... You know, if you want to build a YouTube channel, you want to do this. And people are very specific. You want to have this many shorts. You want to do this many videos. You want to do this many things. The greatest advice channels out there are not talking about the boom, boom, this is what you need to do stuff. The greatest advice channels out there are telling you about their experience in doing it. And then you're able to take that information and create your own experience in doing it. And that the same thing goes for like art. Uh, creating an art career, a music career, or anything like that. You have people out there that are telling you what their experience was, understanding full well that like you you have to do this. You're you're gonna you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail. Yeah, and let's talk about <clears throat> the learning process, right? Because I think another superpower in being unstoppable is to learn what you need to learn when you need to learn it. Because learning, or the lack thereof, stops a lot of people. Because either A, you're overwhelmed by the amount of things you think you need to learn all at once. Or B, you don't want to learn the thing (laughs) that you feel you need to learn in order to move forward. Probably because you're overwhelmed by the amount of things you need to learn. So you piecemeal it, right? You get into the thing and you learn the things you need to know when you need to know them. And you can look it up. You can go to YouTube University. You can ask a friend, but then you do it. 
That's... And then you fail <laughs> or you make a mistake and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. But it's one thing at a time. That is the best way to learn, too. When you run into a roadblock and you're like, how the F do I do this? And then you look something up and then it becomes relevant because you're looking it up and now you have to try it. Oh, that's work. Oh, that's not working. Then you look up something else and then you try it. I was just doing it with the music program. <clears throat> I do not know how to use all of the features of my music program, but I was like looking up one specific thing and I was like, OK, I think I have an understanding. Then I try to do it. And then I told Rafi, I don't think I actually understand how this works. So then I try to do it a different way and so on and so forth until I understand how this thing yeah. works. And that's that's how learning happens for me. For sure. I, I feel like that's how learning just happens, like for real. Patricia said, I feel like I lost my mojo. My mom passed away a month ago and I have tried to paint but can't. I want to be unstoppable again. Oh, Patricia, I am so sorry. Yeah, that's really hard. And maybe don't maybe just be easier on yourself. Maybe you're just not ready yet. And maybe trying to force it is making it worse. There there is a big being unstoppable doesn't mean that you don't take breaks and you don't ease back. Because a lot of times you guys know that when it comes to art, like this is this is an emotional thing, right? It's all emotional, whether it's the creation of the art or the art journey itself. And sometimes shit happens, things happen in life, and you need that time to heal. Yeah. Um, before you could put... Because art, everything that we do is an expression of ourselves. And there are times where we reel it back and we just allow ourselves that time to heal. And, and most importantly, don't beat yourself up for that, you know? And that also sometimes in the grieving process, um, you're, if you're going to create art, it changes your art for a time, right? Mm -hmm. So you might make some pieces that are solely for the purpose of releasing emotions that need to be um, manifested in that way without the intention of sharing it or adding it to your public collection, but just for you. And so maybe approach art, not with the idea of like, you need to fall back into your routine, but maybe approach art from the place of like, this is strictly for me. Like, yeah. even if no one else <clears throat> sees this, like, this is how I'm going to work through this. Is a B said grieving is okay for a time. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I've said, I'm not crazy. My reality is just different than yours. Exactly. 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 That's where that's where I've had these conversations with people where they've said, you know, this can't be done. And I'll be like, maybe not in your world, but I fully believe that this could be done in my world. Or if you really want to leave them <clears throat> baffled and confused, just be like Dang, your field of potentiality seems pretty narrow, my friend. <laughs> Troy said, got a short film to direct. Awesome, That's Troy. That's amazing, Troy. Ev said, I'm calling this podcast the Alice in Wonderland. Good for you, chat. Alice laughed. There's no use trying, she said. One can't believe impossible things. I dare say you haven't had much practice, said the queen. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Valerie said, there's a first time for everything, and why not be the first? Set the bar high. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The bar is set at whatever it is that you decide to set it. And that's the thing. Like, a lot of people go out and they look at, they look at the world, and there's a lot of, you know that from just being an artist and, like, the myths of the starving artist and how, like, artists are like this. Artists are, there's, like... 30 something myths that I've just run across and doing research that I'm like looking at them. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And none of it makes sense. Some of it is like positive, you know, in a sense, like artists are sociable and they get invited to all parties. And I'm like, that's not true. That's not true across the board. And that's the thing. Things are not true across the board. They're only true if the person decides to believe that they're true. You know what I mean? If you believe that you cannot do it, then you cannot do it. That's the simple fact of it. Being unstoppable is understanding no matter what comes my way, no matter how much I fail, no matter how things look, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep pivoting. I'm going to figure out a way to get there, knowing full well that once you get there, there's already another there to get to. Right. It's a journey that never ends. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how long you've, we've been doing this for a while and it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this. There's always 
a destination that you want to get to. And I think it also might be helpful to acknowledge that at the end of the day, everything that we do is for ourselves and our own growth process and our own journey and knowing ourselves, even if what you do is very public. Ultimately, what we're all trying to do is like grow and know ourselves more through what we're doing. And so the person that really needs convincing is you. And the person that really needs permission is you. And the person that's going to be watching when you fail is you. So <laughs> establishing a good relationship with yourself, I giving yourself permission, being graceful with yourself when you fail, all those things are important. I love that. And I would add one more thing that the person that needs to give you permission is you is you yeah right so the person that needs permission is you and the person that needs to give you permission is you mm -hmm. that's brilliant i love that valerie said there's a first time for everything <clears throat> and what oh i just read you that just read apologies that. ev said when i was your age i always did it for a half an hour a day why <clears throat> sometimes i believed as many as six impossible things before oh this is exactly sometimes i believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast there goes the shawl again yep. lewis carroll uh, Cameron said, I ain't changing. I'm waiting to see if someone will notice and let me know. Oh, you're <laughs> hole in your pants. Jenny said, and things that have been done a million times can fail too. So it's worth a shot. Oh, absolutely. Most definitely. I've said, Clee went there. The rabbit hole has been breached. I assume this is regarding my comment about reality and yeah. how real it must actually be or may not be. Nancy said, amen, Rafi. Learning is doing. Yes, exactly. Isabee said it can help to watch brush strokes to handle a brush, like practicing a dance routine, body memory. Body memory, yeah. It's mm -hmm. like learning uh, really good handwriting. You know, you have to, you, you watch and you see and you do. You have to do. That's, mm -hmm. that's the most important part. I could be, there's a lot of people that are very, this was a thing that I used to think about a lot when I was a kid because I read every book under the sun. So it was like there was this idea of being book smart and then life smart. And I thought about it. It was like, you know, it's great having this experience. And I love authors and I love reading because to me, that's this beautiful creation mm -hmm. that sparks the imagination. But there's a big difference between reading about the Sistine Chapel and seeing it, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a big difference between reading about some art or seeing a picture of it and actually standing in front of it and immersing yourself in that creation. And so it's the same thing with learning. Like there's a big difference between reading about it or watching something about it and actually doing it. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, immersion, immersion. And just like muscle memory, it's the same thing with your perspective and your outlook and how, how much potential you see. Like that's training a muscle too. And I think also it's very good to surround yourself with people that see the potential in themselves and their goals, right? Instead of people that maybe aren't aiming for anything. Yeah. Who you surround yourself with matters. I would say if you're a big dreamer and you have lofty goals and you have ambitions, you definitely... You don't need to be surrounded by people who share your vision, but you need to be surrounded by people who have a vision. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. That was one of the things that we um, went through when we were in Pensacola. Mm -hmm. We had some friends that just, you know, they're, we always have lofty goals. We always want to, like, reach for the stars and do something that uh, that we've never done before that maybe has been done or maybe hasn't been done. And our, uh, we had friends that were like big naysayers, right? They were like closet naysayers about it. And the realization hit me that I was like, this, they don't do anything. They're, there's nothing that they're like reaching for. They're just kind of like going through the motions of life. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's the way that you want to live. But at the same time, it's like, I don't need to be taking advice of what's possible from people that don't have any kind of thing that they want or dreams or anything or even be downwind of that energy exactly really. like um i like what cameron says here the person who wrote the cliffs notes people read when trying to assess my ability to succeed needs to be fired very inaccurate <laughs> i love it and that is essentially what people are doing 
when they're trying to understand what you're doing is they're coming up with their own Cliff's Notes summary, but it's based on them. It has, exactly. So it's really actually quite inaccurate to try to describe what you're trying to do to someone who's really far away from that way of thinking. Exactly. Because, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you're going to experience what they think about their own world and own possibility and their own insecurities. The truth of the matter is, and a lot of people could take this however they want. The truth of the matter is that people speak about themselves even when they're talking about you. Mm -hmm. And that's the reality of it because that's the only experience that they have. They've only walked through their own shoes. They could empathize with somebody very much but still, even still, you're seeing it through the filter of your own life. So when somebody is naysaying, or if you're naysaying yourself, you really do have to look at that filter. And sometimes you just have to clean the muck off of that filter for yourself because you might be repeating stuff to yourself that isn't yours, that came from your childhood or came from, you know, hanging out with certain people where they lived a life where there was a lot of limitations for them. The fact of the matter is, your life can be whatever it is that you want. And sometimes you have to take that drastic step to clean that filter, to be the person that um, you want to be, as opposed to reminding yourself constantly that, oh, I'm just not that kind of person. And sometimes, so in, in trying to do that, I think what Shroy is saying here is really important too. Detach, prioritize, then execute. Detach is a really concise way to say it. I've been um, I've been saying in my head to myself recently, quit trying so hard. Just quit trying so hard. And what I mean is like, it can really feel like slogging through the mud when you're so like wound up about something because it's important to you. And sometimes the best thing to do to become unstoppable is to give less boops about it. Like... Because it removes some of the pressure and struggle, right? We were talking about this yesterday because, like, I don't know, I did 100 vocal takes for the song I'm working on, and, and Rafi was like, why do you think you're so wound up about it? And I was like, because it's really important to me, right? But all my songs are. This is just the one that's happening right now. And I could, I could live and be like, well, it's important to me for this reason and this reason and this reason. But at the end of the day, like, that's not going to help me. So sometimes you need to just quit trying so hard and don't be so wound up about it and detach and prioritize and execute. That's why, as Troy says. That's why in the video that I put out there about, um, you know, being able to work on, work on more art, create more. Um, in one of the parts of the video I talk about it and I'm like, you got to be okay with it being good enough, right? Because good enough is a measure where you have reached a point where you're like, this is good, right? But your insecurity of what somebody else might think is the part that says it's not, it's not good enough, right? So when something reaches that point where you're like, I think it's done. I think I'm good. It's good enough. Good enough. And that's, that was a step that when it came to creating art or creating anything that I do, just took off the pressure, there was no pressure there. It's not like, oh, this is, the, you know, a lot of people obsess over that. This is the one work of art. Like they work on something like it's, it's my precious and it, it's, you, <laughs> it's my hope and you obsess and like everything. And it's like everything that you work on is going to be the one, every single thing. So you got to, it should be, it should be, it should be the one. This is the one. This is the thing that I'm working on. And it's getting to that place where you realize every single one is going to be so I just need to make this good enough because good enough for me means good. Like, that's it. It's Again, just good. You're kind of the one that you need to <clears throat> impress. <laughs> Not everybody else. Um, Jenny said, when my dad died, there was so much to do. My mom was alone for the first time in 53 years. There was no art for me. And then suddenly there was just like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to step away sometimes. Sometimes you just step away and... and it's going to be there. It's brewing on the inside. Yeah. And and I think it's better to tr let it happen than to try and force it, most definitely. Shroy said, well-being is realized by small steps. Zeno would say, looking back on his life, but is truly no small thing. 
Yeah, I love that. Exactly. Ev said, I've been doing, uh, I've been doing is enjoying the daily discovery of how I learn through mistakes. I mean, after 52 years, coming to the realization that I have an evil perfectionist living rent free in my head (laughs) and I I will break them. (laughs) I love that, Ev. Mm -hmm. Isabi said, seeing a photo of a painting is not seeing and experiencing the impact of the original. Exactly. And that's why it's like seeing or doing, you know, listening to someone tell you like this is how it's done versus somebody actually doing it. And there's a big difference there. Immersion is the best thing. I mean, we know that that's true for language learning as well. Mm-hmm. If you want to learn a language like that, then you move there, right? And you, where you have to speak the language. Yeah, because then it becomes do or die. And that's the reality of it. If you get a lot of people get stuck in that research phase of doing something. And at that point, you're, you're stoppable. <laughs> like you're not actually doing the thing. You're using the research loop as an excuse to not do the thing. Doing the thing is what makes you unstoppable. Heidi said, I really appreciated Rembrandt and his self-portraits, but not nearly as much as when I saw one in person in Scotland. It was amazing, much better than seeing it in a book. Right? Yeah, art in person. And not to make little of the experience of learning from a book or learning from a video, because there's value in that, too. I feel like... Learning from a book or learning from a video is a stepping stone into like, if I want to pursue this further, then my next step is experiential. Exactly. But books and videos are a great way to dip a toe in and see if you're in, if you're on a trajectory that's going to be amazing for you. It is. It is because, you know, a lot of times, and that's the reason that a lot of our videos are the content that they are or the books. It's because a lot of times it's the emotional thing, right? So it's almost like you want permission to be able to go in this direction and you want somebody that has done it to tell you that it's possible, Mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of it is emotional and really that's, that's what you get. Yes, you could listen to it. You could watch a tutorial about step one and how to do this thing, this physical thing, right? How to paint a portrait. First, you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to do that. You're going to want to do that. You're going to watch that. You're going to be like, okay, this is how it's done. Or if you're looking at a recipe, this is how it's done, right? When you get comfortable with that recipe, when you get comfortable with the way that it's done because you've done it and it tasted like this, or it ended up being like this. And then you're like, you know, if I add a little bit of this, maybe it'll be like this. Or if I change this technique, it'll be like that. It's in the process of doing it where you actually learn and you create your own voice and your own style with something, mm-hmm. right? There, There's plenty of tutorials and stuff and how to do something like someone else. But you don't really know how to do this thing the way that you want to do this thing until you do it. And in most cases, until you fail horribly, you fail terribly. There are plenty of times where like you're going to fail, but it's giving you the confidence and knowing like, okay, if I get this wrong, then all I have to do is do it again. Try it again. Try it. Tweak it. Make it a little bit different. Do something different with it. And that's that's the reality. And the only way to really learn those lessons and and to be able to give to the world, right? Because it's being stuck in that research loop, right? Where you're watching. Okay, well now I need to know. Now I need to watch another one. Now I need to watch another one. And you're using it as an excuse to not get started. That's where that's where things get a because. How many videos are, how much information and stuff are you actually going to retain? Not much. Like, not much of it. I love a good research loop, but I know when I've hit my threshold because I feel physically sick. Yeah. (laughs) I I like, I reach a place where I'm like, oh, I'm done. I'm done researching. Um, Isabi said, our preconceived con... Conceptions. Conceptions skew our logic, wrong conclusions result. True yes, story. Yes, very good. Sarah said, sometimes you just need to leave. Okay, let's talk about that end of being unstoppable. Sometimes you fail to admit to yourself for years and years and years and years that you don't really want to be doing a thing and you're scared to change direction because you've just been doing this thing for a really long time. You may even be kind of established doing said thing. But maybe your heart's not there anymore, and maybe you need to give yourself permission to be able to burn it to the ground yeah. and and follow your <laughs> your new path. I think that's a place where a lot of people get stuck too. And sometimes I need to give myself permission to walk away from something just to be sure that I don't want to walk away from it. 
Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Give yourself permission to quit, to walk away, to burn it to the ground, and then you'll really know if you want to be doing it or not. Exactly, because if you're like, you know what, this is, you're going to either feel uh, weight lifted off your shoulders or you're going to be sad. sad. And uh, the truth is that that's something that we've been talking about for a long time because it was a, I got a taste of it when I first started my art career because I was doing the signs and the signs were selling and essentially I was building, you know, we were making money. I was building a career doing art signs and at that point I had a choice. Like I could walk away from this thing that is being lucrative and supporting my art or I can head in a different direction. Now, I hated doing signs and as terrifying as it was to walk away from you know, that perception of yeah. security, um, it was much more important to establish myself as who I want to be and, you know, break the rules, essentially, not follow the standard way that people do stuff, you know, the standard way that people will say, like, oh, are you successful? The first thing they want to know about is your bank account. It's like, I'm sorry, but your bank account doesn't equal success. You know, it just doesn't work that way successful is like looking at somebody and being like man i want to live that life Mm -hmm, most definitely that person's living their best life cameron said the only way for me to finish a painting is to pretend that i'm not trying to finish it the end of artwork anxiety will creep in otherwise totally feel you cameron that's what i have to do with vocals too like i have to get myself in a place where i'm pretending that it's a throwaway track in order to not sound nervous Corey said, I wonder if caring less isn't caring less, and it's instead letting go and trusting yourself that your capacity to care so much will be enough. Boom, exactly. Corey. Yes, and that's that's why. That's why for me, it's like, it's good enough. Mm-hmm. I look at painting, because I know that if, I, if I'm in the mindset where I'm able to look at something that I'm working on or creating, saying, you know what, this is good enough. At that point, I've completely deleted all the people in my mind that are out there. They're going to say like, that sucks. That's horrible. It's like, it's good enough. People are going to hate it. People are going to love it. No matter how long I work on this thing, people are going to hate it. People are going to love it. There is no amount of quote unquote perfection that you could come up with that is going to make it loved across the board. Yeah, it's just not going to work. So as long as you love it and you're like, you know what, this is good. I like it's good enough for me. I love this. Then it's good enough. Or as Cassie likes to say, it's good enough for the girls we go with. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Which I love. Ev said the other day, my mother-in-law caught me practicing guitar soloing techniques over nature sounds of flowing water. She gave me the best look, but it works better for me than a metronome. Weird work. I love it. I love it, Ev. I love it, too. Just find what works for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Kelly said, I am being brave and fiddling with a music program. Yes, Kelly, that's that's awesome. Kelly, I love your song your song I, I i can't wait i know right and only you are going to be able to do justice to it and so i'm i'm so excited ev said amen walked away from kids books for exactly that reason exactly and Corey said walking away and burning it to the ground doing that right now with my academic career and i feel all the feels but i know it's the right thing to oh, do oh Corey, man we're we're Sending you all the love and stuff. And obviously, you know, you can reach out to us whenever, Corey. Making that move is scary. But it's when you know it's right, it's like, it's it's also exhilarating. Yep. Um, Cameron said, a person in the research loop is someone who is waiting for the courage and confidence in their selves. It's true. No research is going to give you confidence. Trying and eventually succeeding is the way to gain it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And what's most important is that person, let's say that they're, they are in a research loop, is finding out that like it's okay to not succeed right away. That, I think that that's mm-hmm. one of the most important things. It's like it's okay to not succeed right away. I talk about this. It's in, a rite of passage to not succeed right away. I talk about this in one of the videos. There are so many artists out there that are like, I'm horrible at drawing hands. And my response is always like, how much time have you spent trying to draw hands? Oh, you know, I've tried over the years, but I just don't draw hands. And I'm like, if you gave yourself the challenge, right, every day for 30 days to just draw a hand, just go in your sketchbook and just draw a hand in different shapes and stuff like that. By the end of the month, you would be amazing at drawing hands. Like it really, it's just one of those things where it's like, just 
do it. You got to do it. It's the action of doing it, you know, and even if you're in that stage, because a lot of people think that, oh, you know, as it, I'm very good at sketching. Now I'm really good at sketching because I've been sketching since I was five years old. Mm -hmm. So I went through the stage of the big balloon finger hands, you know, like that's that I went through that stage and then over the years tweaked it and made it, you know, really, really focused on it. And that's the thing. When you focus on getting better at something, you can only really get better at that thing if you keep doing it. So you better love it. Yeah. So you, but be yeah, you better love it. So if you're, if you want to draw hands, you better love fucking drawing. It hands. better not because hands are lucrative. You yeah. better love hands. <laughs> Zara says hands are lucrative. I love that. <laughs> we should, we should like start passing around a myth in the art world. That like hands are so lucrative right so now. So lucrative right now. Everybody's just it's hands. If you can't get on hands, you've missed the train. Yep. Zara said, "Hey, hey my food is always experimental. Turns out great almost a hundred percent of the time." And Me even too. when you even yeah, you are definitely a food experimenter, um, savant. <laughs> and even when it's like not, the, it's still a good experience, right? Because then you're like. Meh. But it's still like, you know. But you already know how you're going to improve it the next time to make it like something substantially awesome. Zara's like, what? I can't have everyone love what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly said, I want to walk away so bad from my day gig. Only you will know when it's time to make that move. Exactly, Kelly. And one day you might just wake up and be like, I'm going to make that move. Or yeah. you might be in the middle of your day at work and be like, I'm out. Yeah. Then, you you're, just don't then know. you're out. You grab a goldfish bowl and you're like, who's coming with me? Yeah. You're cool. Yeah. I'm out. Cameron said the perfect life is an illusion. People who are living in an even or in a liveaboard boat. <laughs> oh, liveaboard boat are often looked down upon. Don't assume your perfect life is theirs. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, like only you can know if you're living your best life, right? Only you can prevent force. I think about when we uh, were on the road, right? So a lot of people, a lot of people are like, wow, you guys lived on the road. We renovated a Ford Explorer. We were on the road. That's really intense. It's really intense. It's, But it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. Doesn't mean that every single moment of it was an awesome experience. There was a lot of, you know, for us, it was a journey of like discovering who we are and what we're capable of and stuff. So a lot of that was like trials and tribulation. But we wouldn't have it any other way. We, we loved the experience. And we ran into a lot of people that were like, wow, your life is so awesome. And I was like, mm, you know, it's, it's awesome because we make it awesome. Not because it's awesome, inherently awesome. Like this experience could be an absolute effing nightmare for anyone. We just decide to focus on what we're getting out of this. Mm -hmm. And so it was for us. And conversely, there were people that were like, your life sounds like absolute crap. I would never do that. I don't understand how you can stand each other or live in that small of a space or blah, blah, blah. And we were like, it's for us. Yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Leslie said, morning, rogues. Another beautiful day down here in South Island. Good morning, Good Leslie. morning, Leslie. Ev said, it's so funny, but I think about how long it took to get good at music the first time in my life and how many years to draw or get in shape. Shit just takes time. <laughs> we should get over the savant myth. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, the truth is you might have an aptitude towards something and you might find that you're driven to pursue it because you enjoy it and those things go hand in hand but it's like you better love it really that's better, all it comes you better down love to it. and the, the truth is that like i i feel like for a lot of uh, for a lot of people they like delete that time that childhood time right they're like well you know from ages uh one through 12 uh there's nothing experiential that they're getting out of that i'm like there are kids that have been drawing every day consistently right maybe their lives suck you know, I think Since about like a, yeah. I think about my life, like my life kind of wasn't the greatest. Right. And so, like, I spent a lot of time with my nose in a sketchbook. That's why I got really good at art. I could draw and it was something that there was a reason why I did it. It brought me joy. And so I did it consistently. And it's like you can't delete that experimentation and practice time from anybody's life. So somebody sees a 15 year old that's really good at drawing. They're like, oh, that's a savant. And it's like, 
No, they just spent more time doing it. <laughs> That's a lonely kid. That's what that is. <laughs> a lot of us were lonely kids. Yeah. I spent a lot of time reading books and singing into a hairbrush and drawing pictures. But music won out over drawing pictures for me. And it that's did. the simple truth of it. Gail said, waiting on new AC unit to be installed. It's 115 degrees. Yeah. Uh, and a hornet got in the house, but being unstoppable and sitting here working on illustrations for a book while listening to your great Oh, advice. Gail, that's amazing. That's amazing. You are, you are a effing champion. Applaud yourself for yes. your badassery. Fried said, wow, I definitely need this chat today. I just finished doing a thing every day for a long time. I agree with y'all. I announced it to my peeps and they are tearing it down and act like it was easy. I told them, no, no, you weren't there. And it looks easy because I made it look easy. Yes. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It looks easy because I made it look easy. You didn't see all the other torment that I went through in order to get this done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like you have people out there that are going. I remember telling somebody like, oh, yeah, you know, I was very excited because the concept of designing T-shirts came to me. Right. And I didn't want to just do like um, paintings, you know, paintings on my T-shirt. Like I didn't want to do that. I wanted to literally design T-shirts that I would wear. And the truth of the matter is, as much as I love art, I don't want to wear art. You know what I mean? Like, but I do want to wear the art that looks good on a T-shirt, like, you know, sketches and, and things like that. Something that tells a story, something that tells something about who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, all right, I'm going to do these line sketches. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Right. So I'm doing physical line sketches and then um, scanning them in and then tweaking them in Photoshop and creating a, a sketch. And I created these different designs, which are on my website that I sell t-shirts now. And I went to a friend and it was like, oh dude, like I'm really excited. Like I, I just designed a bunch of t-shirts and did my first release of t-shirts and people seem to like them. And he looked over at me, he's like, oh, you're doing t-shirts now? You know, and I'm, and I remember just standing there looking at him, thinking to myself like, I don't need people like you in my life. I don't want to be downwind of your energy. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Take it elsewhere. Valerie said at Kelly, I can't wait to stop my day gig too. What gets me through is knowing I'm in the driver's seat of my life. I'm choosing to do this job and it's temporary so I can work towards it being my full time gig. Yes. Yeah. Good. It's all about your mindset too. It is all about. You got to think about it when you are anywhere in life, when you're dealing with anything. And this is something that I constantly, it helps me um, when it comes to my decisions, right? It's like you are either in a place where you feel victimized by whatever the situation is, the person, this thing. And if it is like that, or, or you are in a place where you are feeling empowered despite what the situation is, right? So like you kind of reach for those things that make you feel powerful in that moment and in that situation and really clears your mind to that place where you're like, you know what, F this, I'm out, you know? And, and instead of like being stuck at a place, you're there because you choose to. And that's really great, Valerie, because that's the, that's exactly what you're doing there. Like I'm choosing this because this is, and this is temporary because this is what I'm working towards. I'm doing this for future me. I'm hooking up future me with a full-time art career. Exactly. Um, Ev said Rafi, the lonely kid, right? Reminds me of Robin Williams. He was a miserable, lonely child. So he made up hundreds of friends who later came out to help him with his career. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Cameron says, why suffer for a job you hate? When you can possibly suffer the same or less doing Do what, what you, you love. love. Why, Why torture, torture yourself, yourself with things with you things? hate? So I always kind of felt this way. And I had a very low tolerance for bull garbage in the workplace. And so I was a job hopper, which, of course, they tell you is highly irresponsible thing to be. But I always figured if I really hate this job, I could probably find a job that I hate less for around the same amount of money. Yep. So I was never content to stay anywhere that was like really painful. And there's different levels of painful, right, um, that you assess for yourself. But you could have a part-time gig in your art career and get by 
if you're willing to. And I guess it comes down to like, what are you willing to do? What are you willing to do? And also like, what is the stuff that you have? You know, like with Mm -hmm. my life, I was in the corporate world and yes, and I had all these financial responsibilities and stuff. And then I just kind of burned that world to the ground. So I went, you know, I was in a place where like, um, I could live on very little money. I literally didn't have a place. To, I lived in my car. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and then you came and we lived in our car. So Yeah, I was like, that sounds great. Let's, <laughs> let's be up out. But, but <laughs> you know, to make that decision is a huge thing. That's a life-changing decision. Mm-hmm. And that's why I will never tell somebody, like, quit your job. Because I know that some people have financial and, and familial responsibilities. And it's like, you got to do it your way. Don't. I'm not going to sit out there and preach like, my way is the only way to do this. No, definitely not. But it's it's good to at least say, like, know that you can. You can burn it to the ground and start over if you want to. Yeah. I don't care how old you are. You can. You can. It's an option that's out there for you. It is an option. And it's highly em- empowering to always keep that option in the back of your mind, knowing that, like, you know what? If this gets any worse, I can go for option B. That's why I don't worry about it when I cut my hair because I'm like, if I botch this, I'll just shave it off. Like, that's the reset button (laughs) and it'll grow back. And then I'll borrow some of Rafi's bandanas for a little while. It'll be awesome. The the YouTube thumbnails would be amazing. I'd be bald (laughs) making that face. (laughs) All the weird faces I make in our still shots. Yeah. Ev said, I'm going to rework Klee's downwind of your energy into a city folk version. I don't want to be under the armpit of your energy on the afternoon subway. <laughs> I love it. I love it too. Leslie said, totally agree, Clee. It takes time. There was one, that's one of the benefits of art school. A daily discipline of art making makes a difference. I mean, yeah. And I mean, that that's why I'll never criticize people that go to art school because you're there, you're interacting with whatever. The, the biggest thing for me when it comes to art school is remembering that just because somebody is standing on a pulpit in front of the class doesn't make them the end-all, be-all knowledge of the class. Like, you really do. That's one of the biggest things that I would learn from doing art school. But the ability to, basically, that's your job. You're sitting there painting. You know, you're sitting there working on art. You're sitting there um, collaborating with other artists. You're sitting there doing that thing and that i would say that that's that's definitely one of the biggest benefits to it leslie said she loves i don't want to be downwind of your energy taking this to my coaching clients today (laughs) that's awesome leslie sarah said my landlady hates blood red cows at dawn this is a piece of art that we love of sarah's yeah um she's a debbie downer and i stopped sharing my art and ideas with her good sarah good good i've said clee that has been my entire working life (laughs) I'm a fan of it. It worked for me. Zero, I, zero tolerance for boop. I was not like that. <laughs> no. Until I was like that. I wasn't like that until I was like that. Yeah. I, well, I, sometimes it's not like that. Till that's it's like that. Yeah. That's basically where people were like, has he lost his mind? Right. Because I wasn't following the rules anymore. And, you know, that's and I think that that's why the inspiration behind like the rogue artist and all that stuff. It's like break the rules. Just break the rules because rules are made to be broken by people that want to live life to the fullest. And you're only a degenerate till your ideas work out. Exactly, exactly. (laughs) Ev said, hilariously enough, I now own guitars worth way more than most cars I've ever owned. Priorities, people, priorities. I can walk and carry my damn guitar. (laughs) (laughs) Valerie said, yup, as soon as my debt is paid down, I'm going for it. I also give myself a time frame, one year goal, and I'm going full time. It oh, is good to set it. a time frame That's goal good. and That's... be like generous with yourself and don't hold yourself rigidly, but aim for it. Hardcore aim yep. for it. Isabel said pulpit. Yes, the pulpit. Standing on the pulpit. Did you say something else? I probably did. A special Rafi word? Yeah, a special Rafi Sometimes word. Sometimes those happen. You know, I leave those in the videos because like when I'm editing, I'm like, I could re-record this. I'm like, I don't care. It's good enough. I think that (laughs) everyone in our community is familiar with special Rafi words and it's endearing. It's an endearing Rafi quality that we all love. Well, you know, when I learned um, how to speak, I learned English and Spanish at the same time. See, So like a lot of words, it's funny how that works, right? Because when I think of grass, 
you know, I think of grass, but I also, it's, it's like several words describing one thing. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is that my words will sometimes get jumbled with other words, right? So when I look at grass, I see grass, yerba, you know, that's, that's what I see. Those are the words that describe the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's English or Spanish. And sometimes a special word comes and out. And then sometimes a special word gets snuck in there and gets in there. Yeah. I'm not bilingual, but I make special words too. The other day, I tried to say great and got ya to oh, Rafi. Yes. And I turned to him and said grot. Grot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I really she liked... Looked, she looked over and she was like, grot. Grot. And I thought, I actually really like that word to mean great and I've got you. I understand and also I'm on board. Grat. Yeah. Grat. Yeah. That so, should be a new thing. <laughs> go forth and say grat. And then yeah, go forth and explain. say grat. I got a bounce, said Shroy. I will see you. See you, Shroy. Uh, Gail said, I left my 70 plus hour week corporate job a year ago, totally burned it to the ground and started over at 64. Absolutely no oh, regrets. Oh, Gail, that's amazing. That's amazing. And that's the thing is... Life goals. <laughs> Burn it to the ground. Yep. Um, you will, you kind of know, you just know. Like, I think oftentimes we, we kind of just know. Like what we need to do, what we want to do, what direction we want to go. And I think sometimes we just need permission from ourselves to do the thing. Definitely. Because, you know, the longer that you're doing something that you don't want to do, the more you establish and stack reasons for to keep doing it. Right. And so the longer that you're doing it, by the time you get to a place where you're making that decision that, you know what, this needs to end, I'm going to stop doing this. You have you have years worth of excuses on why you should keep doing that. Just do it for one more. Just, you know, just keep doing that. Oh, if you don't do this, then, you know, the sky is going to fall and you're going to burst into flames, spontaneous human combustion. <laughs> like it's just it turns into this whole like thing because you've now made it bigger than what it actually is. I like the idea that no matter what's going on, you could reach for like, well, at least it's not spontaneous combustion. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, Zara said, I grew up with four languages, learned as a kid. I haven't practiced, so it's all English mainly now. Shame to my ancestors. <laughs> Cameron said, we're used to your antics, Rafi. I don't know. I don't even notice your Rafi words anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Cameron. Ev said, I actually just keep Rafi special words on file and pull them out for Scrabble. Most of them are championship game winners. That's excellent, Ev. If you want, you could add Grot to the list. To the to the koi way, uh, Isabi said grok with a K means understand in some classic. Oh, that's great. That is great. Grok. Grok. So if you say <laughs> grok. grot, it means one thing. And if you say grok, it means something. I'll have to pay real close attention. So grok means I understand, but grot means great. And I understand. Okay. And speaking of great, let's talk about being unstoppable. Let's give our final things. I know that this conversation just went off on a super, super tangent. But, you know, if you look closely at all those things, they all mean, you know, they, they're all describing how to be unstoppable. Absolutely. That's the reality of it. So my, do you have any ending thoughts for being unstoppable? Like the thing... I mean, honestly, and, and all jokes aside, it really is a lot of these things that we talk about because being unstoppable doesn't just mean like, oh, I'm going to be unstoppable when it comes to this and there's a specific way of doing it. It really is an attitude. It's, it's a life choice. Yeah. It's a life choice. It's a perspective of that willingness to, you know, uh, I'm not getting the support that I need from this place. I'm willing to burn all that to the ground. I'm willing to burn my bridges. I'm willing to get rid of people in my life. I'm willing to start being weird. And where people, like with me, when I changed my life, everybody was coming out of the woodwork telling me, what's wrong with you? You've lost your effing mind, right? Because there was a life path that everyone was expecting me to follow, and I decided not to. I decided to just blaze my own trail and because of that, you know, people are like, something's wrong with them. And it's the willingness to just be like, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to push forward. I'm going to believe in myself so much. And I know that it's going to take time for me to get there. 
But on my journey to getting to a place where I become confident within myself and my abilities, I'm going to be my biggest cheerleader. I'm going to constantly be my biggest cheerleader. And I don't need anybody else to not naysay me. You can naysay me all you want because that has everything to do with your life. I'm going to push forward. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to fall on my face. I'm going to fail, but I'm going to keep going. And really, unless you give up, it's just a work in progress. Mm -hmm. It's all just a work in progress. Yeah. I, so my final thought jumping off of that is like we we keep coming back to the you factor a lot in this podcast. And that's essentially the thing. And that's the reason that I started calling myself a relentless iota, however many years ago. Relentless iota, right? Unstoppable. Unstoppable small thing. Um, you're the thing. You're the ultimate power in your universe, your reality, your your kingdom that you're building, your art empire, you're the one that gives permission. You're the one that can be excited or dismal. You're the one that can be disappointed or proud of yourself. You're the one that can get in your own way. You're the only one you need to impress and you're all doing it for you to know yourself better at the end of the day. So just remember that it's all for you. <laughs> just like the song. Isn't that a boys to men song? Or no, something? it is it is a pop song, but it's not boys to men. It's all for you. Um <laughs> and also uh the song Start Wearing Purple by Gogol Bordello is a great song to put you in the eccentric, unstoppable mindset. Oh, I love it. I love it. Sarah says, I have the power. I got the power. Bam, exactly. Bam, bam, bam. Yep. <laughs> Well, that was that was a really really cool kind. I even I love the tangents that this conversation went in. It was very very powerful and powerful. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you so much, the Rogues, for being here. You guys are amazing. You know, it's because of you that we're able to do these things and connect on this level and just absolutely love you guys. And for everybody listening to this at home, thank you so much for listening. And hey, if you like this and you'd like to subscribe for more, just go ahead and click wherever it is that you need to click to subscribe, follow or like. And I would say that that's it. Let us be off and be unstoppable. Most definitely. Want to say goodbye, Klee? Have a grot day. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>